Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist and welcome Jesus who comes to us through His Word and through His body and blood. Let us call to mind our sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son has appeared in our very flesh, grant we pray that we may be inwardly transformed through Him whom we recognize as outwardly like ourselves, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life 
through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the King, and with your justice the King's Son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Please stand. The Lord has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. By now it was already late, and his disciples approached him and, uh, and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already very late. Dismiss them so that they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. He said to them in reply, Give them food yourselves. But they said to him, are we to buy two hundred days' wages worth of food and give it to them to eat? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. So he gave orders to, to have them sit down in groups on the green grass. The people took their places in rows by hundreds and by fifties. Then, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up twelve weaker baskets full of fragments and what was left of the fish. Those who ate of the loaves were five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, 
this week, we are between two important feasts of the Christmas season. Last Sunday, we celebrated the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord when Jesus revealed himself to the Magi from the East as the King not only of Israel but of all nations. He is the Savior not only of a chosen people but of all peoples. And this coming Sunday, we will celebrate the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, which concludes the Christmas season with the Feast of the Lord's Baptism, God Himself, the Father Himself, will reveal who Jesus is, that He is the Son of God. And so this week, our readings for Mass invite us to reflect more deeply on who Jesus really is and who Jesus is for us. I hope that each day of this week, we will be able to answer that question based on our readings. Sino ba si Jesus? Sino ba ang nagkatawang tao na Diyos? Sino ba ang isinilang ni Maria? At sino siya para sa akin? In our first reading today, St. John tells us plainly who God is. St. John says, God is love. And in our gospel today, we see this divine love at work as Jesus feeds the hungry crowd. Take note, my dear brothers and sisters, that Jesus was the one who sensed the hunger of those following him. Walang nagsabi kay Jesus na nagugutom na ang mga tao. Walang nagreklamo sa kanyang mga sa mga sumusunod sa kanya na nagsabing, Panginoon, gutom na kami. Jesus felt the need of the people. And because of this, Jesus also took the initiative of looking for a solution to the people's need. While the disciples told Jesus to simply dismiss the crowd because it is already late and so that they could find food for themselves, Jesus said to his disciples, give them food yourselves. The disciples seems that the disciples seem to be concerned. Paalisin na lang natin sila. Pauwiin na lang natin sila para makahanap sila ng pagkain. But Jesus said, "We will give them food ourselves. Tayo ang magpapakain sa kanila." You know, my dear brothers and sisters, many times, like the disciples, we also want to pass on to others our responsibility to love and to care. We prefer to be detached. We do not want to be involved. Kapag may humihingi ng tulong, sasabihin natin, pumunta na lamang kayo sa charitable institution. Yun ang makakatulong sa inyo. May mga magulang na yung responsibilidad nila sa kanilang mga anak. Ipapasa na lamang sa mga mag-aalaga. Sila na lamang ang magbibigay ng panahon 
at atensyon sa aking mga anak. We pass on our responsibilities to love and to care for others. But God's love is not like that. God's love is always hands-on. The love of God is not distant. It is not aloof. It is not detached. And it is not indifferent. The love of God is always near, present. It is always involved. It always participates in our human affairs. That is why St. John in our first reading today tells us that God is love. But this is the way God shows us His love. God sent His Son into the world so that we may have life through Him. God is so near, God is so present that He chose to be man like us. Hindi malayo ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Ang pag-ibig ng Diyos ay hands-on palagi. Siya mismo ang magmamahal. Siya mismo ang mag-aalaga. Siya mismo ang magliligtas. And so today, my dear brothers and sisters, who is Jesus? Who is the Son of Mary? Who is Jesus for us? And our readings today give us this answer. Jesus is the love of God incarnate. Ang pag-ibig ng Diyos na nagkatawang tao, yan si Jesus. Jesus is God's love in flesh and blood. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, in Jesus, we experience that God's love is not abstract. It is real. In Jesus, we see God's love not as distant, but near. Please stand. Only God the Father can satisfy the hunger of the heart and of the spirit. So we place our needs before Him. And for every petition we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may awaken in its members a hunger and thirst for the bread of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may realize that the longings of the heart cannot be satisfied by the pursuit of worldly success or material comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those who spend their time uselessly searching for joy and happiness in the wrong way may find their right direction and purpose in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That the sick and the handicapped may receive support and consolation from family and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That those who have died may share in the eternal banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We also remember the people who requested for our prayers and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty Father, you have given us the bread from heaven as food for our pilgrim journey. Guide our steps in the way of justice and peace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Thesis 10. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray to the Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. the great